Hello and welcome to another This Week in Linux Distro Review. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about OpenSUSE 11.3. I actually did a review of OpenSUSE 11.3 Milestone 7 about a month ago, and I have to say that's the distro review I've done that's gotten the most flack from the community. The most people that have said this was unfair, this was biased, this was blah blah blah. Basically a lot of people that just didn't like that I had bad things to say about it. And really, I had a lot of great things to say about it, but the way that I organized the review, I did the good, the mediocre, and the bad. And everyone saw that as me focusing on the bad. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Alright, so here we are at OpenSUSE 11.3 KDE Desktop installed from the DVD, so it should have a load of software pre-installed, and hopefully the repositories will be working just fine because it is a final release. You'll notice here I am in VirtualBox, so if I go ahead and do the maximize thing, it does resize the screen for me appropriately. It does have the VirtualBox editions running. That is very cool, and I am very appreciative of that. Resize it back, and everything goes back to normal. So let's go ahead and take a look at the product release information for OpenSUSE 11.3 and just see what's new about it. So you see here, OpenSUSE 11.3 is here. It comes including Spider Oak for syncing your files, Rose Garden for free editing of your files, indexing with Tracker, updates to Firefox and Thunderbird. Uh, in addition, it mentions here it's got GNOME Shell inside of GNOME 3.0. It's also got Plasma Desktop on KDE SC 4.4.4. Let's go for the product highlights just to take a quick look at what is brand new about it. Netbook support includes a KDE Plasma Netbook workspace. Uh, I'll take a look at that before, I'll take a look at it in just a minute. But what else is there? There's also the Migo project, they've done a spin of that. It, I believe it takes an entirely different CD to do that, but feel free to let me know in the comments below if I'm in completely wrong on that. I didn't see it on the DVD installer though, so I will assume that it's not available on that. But here we've got some images of those different interfaces. Here is the Plasma Netbook interface and the Migo workspace. Plasma, Plasma Netbook, Migo workspace, Migo workspace. Very cool. Uh, it looks a lot like a traditional Migo, and you'll see here in just a minute how this KDE Netbook interface actually works. We've also got smartphone support for the Android, iPhone, and Blackberry if you have uh, Rhythmbox, Banshee, or just plain Nautilus. It doesn't look like either of those two applications are installed, or either of those three for that matter, but I would believe that the BlackBerry by default would work with Dolphin as well. As far as the secure backup and file sharing, we do have Spider Oak, which is again not pre-installed on the DVD for some reason, but we'll go ahead and install that in a minute as well. It has support for the ButterFS file system. I did not do that in the installer, and I probably should have, but it is supposed to be available in the installer, so just if you want to try it out, it does give you all sorts of warnings saying, by the way, this is experimental and not 100% supported. Make sure you do have a separate boot partition that is not ButterFS, or else it won't boot. They've also included an LXDE desktop environment that you can use that instead. It's a lot more lightweight than KDE or GNOME. Other than that, lots of new software, lots of new interface features, lots of new KDE and GNOME changes, lots of LXDE changes. Of course, they did not have LXDE before, so this is something new. And new applications, updated applications, all sorts of fun stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at that Plasma Netbook interface. I actually am just running it from console. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but it's a quick way to get in there and give you a chance to look at it. So here, we've got the KDE News in the upper left-hand corner. I should be able to change the activity on this one, go to new settings, and actually change what feeds it's pulling from. So if I wanted to add my own feed to it and then remove this KDE one, hopefully it will go out to the web, pull down, there we go, the latest feed reader information for my website, and I just noticed when I click on that, it opens up Conqueror with the appropriate link that you've clicked on. Very interesting. Now you'll see here this weather forecast was not set up by default. I actually came in and changed the settings and pointed it to New York City. It has pulled down the information and it's slowly pulling down the pictures associated with it. You see there's a storm on Monday and 90 degrees is the high temperature. In the knowledge base you can come in here and register an open desktop account to get knowledge base information. You can also log in to your open desktop account if you have one. Now if I click over to the search and launch page we've got this a little bit of an odd looking interface uh, compared to the GNOME uh, netbook interface it's a, definitely a little bit odd but I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt let's go ahead and just click on let's say office you see it slides into this new panel with all of the new office applications that are available you hit back to go back to it it's got a very interesting interface uh, I'm sure when there are new applications added they should all show up here you'll notice flash player showing up there as a standalone when I first installed OpenSUSE from the DVD, one of the first things it did was popped up and said there are updates available. One of them was, here is the Flash Player, we're going to install it for you. 
So that's one thing I actually haven't tested yet. Let me just go to, oh, let's go to, oh look, Flash Player loaded up. I didn't even have to do any work. There it is, Flash Player. Let's see what it says about. It says we have version 10.1.53. So I opened up OpenSUSE. It said we have a new update for you. It's Flash, it's 10.1, did all the work for you. Very handy, very easy to use. So back on this Plasma netbook interface, if I go back, if I type something into this search query box, it's not really obvious what it's going to do, but if I type in, let's say, Amarok, it will just pull up the Amarok application. So if I know what it's called, it should be very easy to get to it. If I type in Open Office, well, if I click on it again and type in Open Office, it should pull up all of the Open Office applications there. Very handy if you don't know how to find your application you're looking for. So that's pretty much just a quick intro to the Plasma Netbook interface. Let me go ahead and kill that now. I'm sure there's probably a better way to start it and to stop it, but starting it from there and killing it from there is one way to do it. Like I said, probably a better way to do it, but that's just the way I'm doing it. So other than that, let's take a look at that Spider Oak application. I believe I pre-installed it. Spider Oak Backup. It does show up in the menu now. It didn't show up earlier. But there we go. It's Spider Oak. It's asking for information. I'm going to go ahead and create an account, and I'm going to skip past this for you. All right, and the Spider Oak setup process is now complete. You'll notice here it says your cryptographic keys are being generated, making sure your data is secure and private. Takes a few seconds to do it. It actually took a little longer than that because I'm on a virtual box, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish. And now the application is open. There we go, we have the backup interface, the ability to buy more space if we want to. I can tell it to back up these different types of categories or I should be able to go in and do an advanced. Yes, and tell it exactly what I wanna back up. Very handy there. Looks like a, a really interesting interface, and if it works a whole lot better than most other backup applications, I will be pleased. Let's just go ahead and select some stuff, even though there's nothing out there. We'll hit Start Backup. Should be backing it up to their website. There we go, the storage bar is filling up. Currently uploading. All right, and it says Upload Complete. So now what do I do from here? There's nothing queued, there's no action. Here's a log of what actually happened. If I go into View, it will actually show me what I've backed up there from the server, I would assume. I can merge, I can download manage, I can do synchronization of all different systems here, and I can do sharing if I want to share with somebody else in the public. Definitely a useful application. Not exactly sure how it compares to Ubuntu One, but it does have a much more, uh, much more in-depth interface, a lot more advanced interface. If you want to have that sort of level of complexity, it's sort of combining the idea of Ubuntu One with Dropbox with a backup client. So very cool that they've merged all those into one. Basically, other than that, it's just a standard OpenSUSE. It's got a lot of software pre-installed. You see all these different categories, all sorts of different applications in each one, categorized and subcategorized as necessary. We've also got office applications, we've got a load of system applications, including some configuration items, including add and remove software. If I want to install new software, I can come into YAST2, it will load up all of the software repositories that are configured. And from here it will tell me what new packages need to be updated, if there are any. Where I did the Spider Oak install, it went ahead and updated everything for me. But I can come in here and also search if I want to find something new. So if I wanted to search for NVIDIA, let's just go ahead and do that. I don't believe the NVIDIA package is complete yet, but you'll see here we have Xorg driver and Nuvo. That is just the open source NVIDIA driver if you want to use that. But if I search for some other things like FGLRX or record my desktop, those don't appear to be in their repositories. Let's try GUBC view because that's one that I use on an almost daily basis, not available. Um, just things that I would commonly use. Uh, let's just look look through some of the repositories here. Neverball is available in 3D games, Tux Racer. So there are a lot of applications available. You just have to know what to look for, and I don't because I'm an OpenSUSE noob. But you've got different categories that are all available, lots and lots of different things you can install here. So if you know what you're looking for, you might check to make sure it is available. That does bring us to another item, the OpenSUSE Build Service. As far as I understand it, this is kind of like the Arts User Repository. Let's just search in there and see what it comes up with. There we go. There's Record My Desktop that can be installed. Here's all sorts of Record My Desktop, GTK Record My Desktop, lots of different applications that are available with a one-click installer. So if you want to do it that way, that is an option. And of course, you've got different options for different distros here, including Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, Fedora, Mandriva, all distributions. Lots of options there, so if I wanted to install it, let's do a one-click install. It's pulling from the Contrib repository, and when I hit OK, it's going to open up. Tell me, here's some additional repositories we need to install. We'll go ahead and choose that one too, just for a good measure, and pull in Record My Desktop. There we go, it's in 
untrusted GPG key, but we'll go ahead and trust it. And it, it ended. I would assume that it installed the software. So let's go back to the console, record my desktop. There we go. It's actually trying to record the desktop. So it did install it very handy there. Let's just go ahead and do the overall. I would just say it's basically a, a default KDE install. It's got some interesting stuff to it. Uh, it's got a lot of software pre-installed because it's coming from a DVD, but if it didn't have a lot installed, I would be a little disappointed because it's a DVD and I've, you know, four gigabytes of, of download space taken for it. The YAST tools are very useful for installing and removing software and managing every section of your system. Uh, as far as the speed of it, the operating system seems to run pretty quickly. Yast itself seems to be a little bit slow when compared to other package management systems. Just my opinion there though, I am running on a virtual box, but I've got 2 gigs of RAM on it and a 3 gigahertz quad core processor with one, gig one core actually devoted to this. So my opinions of it are kind of mixed. I definitely wouldn't recommend it for new users, but if you want to try it out, you're more than welcome to do so. OpenSUSE 11.3 is completely free. It's got a lot of stuff available for it. Looks like a lot of the proprietary drivers are not quite available yet, but go ahead and download it. Give it a try yourself. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.